Good morning. Welcome to our online Sunday School. We are continuing our Sunday School series, Bible Lessons You Can Teach. In our series, we study the narratives of the Bible, and we study how these narratives are connected to the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. As we study the narratives with this focus, we get to understand how passages from the Bible help us understand and proclaim the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ has come to save sinners. For our study today, we begin with a question. Where did the universe come from? If you have children as a parent, or if you are teaching children in Sunday school, you might have encountered kids who ask this question. And you yourself might have asked this question when you were a kid, and even until now, you might find yourself asking the question. From this question springs forth another, where did we come from? These two related questions have overwhelmed even the greatest minds throughout the history of humanity. Numerous studies have been conducted to answer these two questions alone and many people have spent their lifetime trying to answer this question or trying to find an answer to these questions we the members of baptist bible church believe in the biblical truth that god jehovah created the universe god jehovah created us and our focus verse for today is genesis 1 1 which says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This verse is a very important verse that is somehow uh, missed by a lot of people when reading the book of Genesis. But even if it's just a short verse, it tells us who God is. Who is God? This verse teaches that God is eternal and is beyond the constraints of time, space, and matter. God is unlike us humans who are bound by time, by space, and by matter. Unlike God, we humans are incapable of speaking ourselves into existence. And if you're going to read Genesis chapter 1, you will see that God spoke the world into existence. Saan ka nang galing? Kaya mo bang uh, gawin na nag exist ka sa pamagitan ng pagsalita, hindi mo magagawa yun kasi hindi ka pa nga nag exist So, we are not powerful like God. We humans move, breathe, and live in a universe that is beyond our understanding. We and the universe or the world around us is are dependent on an all-powerful all-present and all-knowing God from whom something can exist out of nothing. God can cause nothing to be something. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. It is reasonable uh, to the, that those who ponder who created the universe also wonder who created God. It's only reasonable to answer that follow-up question. They might ask, if the universe was made by God, then who made God? Christian apologist Sean McDowell says that asking such a question is a fallacy. It is like asking what the color pink tastes like, though a color is not something you taste. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na or itanong na anong lasa ng color pink dahil hindi naman ito nalalasahan kung hindi nakikita. At maaring na tanong na kayo ng tanong, sino ba ang gumawa ng Diyos at hindi kayo nakasagot kaagad. Well, saying or asking if the uh, what the color pink tastes like is like asking who made God. God, by definition, is not something that can be made. Because if God can be made, who made Him? And if He can be made, then He is not God. Indeed, if God is made by something or someone else, then He isn't God at all. 
the Word of God teaches that God is self-existent. Even before time, He is already present. In the beginning, God. Aside from His eternal attribute, which is clearly uh, given in the verse that we have read, Genesis 1.1 also tells us about the power of God. Who is God? God is the powerful creator who spoke the world into existence. He created our world which is distinct from Him. Hindi tayo, di ta, tayo Diyos, kaya tayo ay iba sa Diyos, ngunit tayo ay nakadepende sa Kanya. Dahil hindi tayo pwede na mabuhay sa ating sarili nang hindi nakadepende sa Diyos. Ganun din ang uh, universe natin na ating kinabibilangan. God created our world which is distinct from Him yet dependent on Him. The phrase God said and God said, paulit-ulit to, it appears 10 times in the first chapter of Genesis which simply means that God is powerful enough to speak our world into existence. Hebrews 11 verse 3 says that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. God is beyond our human comprehension and His power to cause things into existence is something that we should marvel and adore. And that is why when you go through the book of Psalms, you would find numerous phrases, numerous verses, and numerous chapters that attribute the power or that praise the attribute of God uh, wherein the psalmist or the musicians just praise God for how powerful He is. They thank God for the power that He has. And He is a powerful God that He spoke the world into existence. When we praise God, we can use the words of uh, the psalmist in Psalm chapter 33, verse 6, when he said, By the word of the Lord, or by the word of Jehovah, were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Now, of course, the, another issue that uh, people would be asking here is the logic and philosophy based on their own worldview. But we Christians are operating on a different worldview, a worldview that is informed by our authority and that is none other else than the Scriptures, the Word of God. So yun ang pinagbabasihan natin sa ating pagkakaunawa, sa ating realidad. Ito ay ang salita ng Diyos na nagmula sa Diyos. Now, that is a very important thing that you can study and meditate uh, in your own time. Is the Word of God reliable? As members of Baptist Bible Church, it's very important to you, for you to know these things. But going back to what we have been discussing, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 might be a simple verse, but it gives us two important truths, that God is eternal and that He is powerful. Truly, our God is eternal. Truly, our God is the all-powerful Creator. We humans and everything that we enjoy here in, uh, in, uh, in the earth and in our lives exist only because of the grace of God. Without God, we are nothing. Without His grace, we are nothing. We humans need God and that is why we cannot boast of the things that we have. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, how is the passage connected to our Savior? The Bible further expounds that the one true God that is mentioned in Genesis uh, chapter 1 verse 1, God Elohim, exists in three persons. Remember, there is only one God, but that God exists in three different persons. The three persons of this one true God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit created the heaven and the earth. God the Spirit was involved in creation. That is why you can see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God the Father was involved in creation, and God the Son was involved in creation. If you are going to check in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, 
the Father of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by Him. Another verse that can help us expound on the idea of scriptures is John chapter 1 verse 1 which tells us how Jesus Christ is the creator God. We're going uh, to go back to one of our previous lessons. We talked about this and even in the preachings that we have had during this pandemic, we emphasize that Jesus Christ is the creator God. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Of course, other people from other religions would try to, uh, you know, reason their way to explain that Jesus Christ is just a man or that Jesus Christ is not God. But of course, as members of Baptist Bible Church, we believe based on these scriptures that Jesus is God. There is only one God. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. The Trinity cannot be explained in a simple formula, though as much as we try, because it is we're talking here about God, and God is beyond our human comprehension. We humans cannot exist without God, because we are not God. The Bible teaches that though God created man, man is not God. And man is a feeble creature. When God cre created man and his creation, he said that they are good. However, again, we have to clarify that we are not God. The first humans disobeyed this holy God who created them. And because of their crime, the righteous, all-knowing God passed a death sentence against them. And this death sentence awaits their descendants. That's us. We have also sinned against him and we are to receive that same punishment. This can be clearly shown throughout scripture that man is a sinner and that man is to be punished with the holy punishment that God has given as a sentence against those who sinned against him. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus, God the Son, was there at the beginning of our world. As mentioned in John chapter 1, He's, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This refers to none other than Jesus Christ. The firstborn or the most important of creation as referred to in Colossians. He is God and we cannot deny that the Bible is teaching that. It is He who was referred in John 1.1. 1, 1. And because of God's love and mercy for the sinner, again, when we are talking about the sinner, we refer to you and I. The sinner who receives Jesus Christ and believes in Him, will no longer be considered as a lawbreaker, but rather as His child. So you see that sinners who have transgressed or who have disobeyed this holy and powerful God, this eternal God who is not bound by time, by space, or by matter, sinners who disobey against Him are supposed to be punished, and that is based on His righteous wisdom and His righteous justice. But God is love and He is merciful and He is gracious to the sinner, to us who have sinned against Him, that the sinners who do not have any hope has hope through Jesus Christ alone. The Bible tells us in uh, John 3.16 and in uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9-10 to 10, that the sinner who believes in Jesus Christ as his Savior will be forgiven, will be reconciled with God and he will be treated as his child. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ, who is present in creation, showed the love of the Father by dying on the cross for the sins of sinners. 
And through his death and through his resurrection, he has secured atonement. He has secured forgiveness for sinners who believe in him, who profess faith in him. The question for you is this. Doesn't matter if you have been attending our church or not. Have you considered yourself as a sinner who has committed a sin against this eternal and powerful Creator God? If so, then it is important for you to understand that you are under His judgment. However, there is hope for you. Though you cannot save yourself, though you cannot buy yourself out of this punishment, you can have your faith in Jesus Christ, the provision of your salvation. I think tinatawag natin ang pagkakaligtas. Dahil ang kaparusahan ng Diyos para sa makasalanan ay naiaakam kay Jesus Christ. At yung righteousness ng Panginoon, yung pagiging tuwid ng Panginoon ay maaaring maipataw sa atin. Ito ay sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. We who are sinners have transgressed against an all-powerful triune God. Yet we have hope in Jesus Christ, not in our good deeds, not in our man-centered religions, but in in Jesus Christ alone. God who has the power to create also has the power to save hopeless sinners. By the truth of the gospel, I invite those who have not yet professed their faith in Jesus Christ to have faith in Him as their saving Lord. We, the members of Baptist Bible Church, believe that Jesus Christ is God and by Him the world was created. By Him, Sinners can also be saved by Him and only through Him. Members of Baptist Bible Church, hold on to this profession. We, as part of His church, have been saved by the blood of the slain Creator who now reigns alive. That is why we have hope because Jesus Christ is alive. We have a powerful God who is also our caring Father. Let this be a reminder for us who are downhearted or discouraged, especially during this pandemic. It has been a long time and it's tiring. It has been discouraging. Let us be comforted with the fact that we have a powerful God. Let this be a reminder for us who doubt God's love and care at times. Let this be a reminder for us who have stopped caring about the church whom Jesus saved. Let us be dependent on the power that He gives as we strive to be more like Him. Our lesson for this morning is just very simple. It is based on a short verse, yet it is full of truths. I encourage you to go to the verses uh, through our articles of faith also which declare our belief in the powerful Creator God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another time. Uh, for us to study your word. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that we have a powerful Savior. Thank you for teaching us that our Savior has the power to create and has the power to save. God, we thank you for the Trinity, Lord, who has planned this uh, salvation for us. Not only are you powerful enough to speak the world into existence, but you are powerful enough also to give us hope and to give us eternal life. Lord, I pray for those people who are listening right now. They might find our teachings as strange, Lord, but uh, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit who softens hard hearts. I ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would convict them of their sins so that they would be able to see you as their Savior. Let us also be reminded as a church that even though we are in a a pandemic time, even though we are in quarantine, we still have responsibilities to the church. We still have to show the gospel in different ways. We have to work together, Lord, so that you would be uh, uplifted in the ministries that we do. We ask, Lord, for those members who have uh, been hurting, who have been discouraged, during this time, uplift them, Lord, and strengthen them, encourage them uh, through the truths of your word. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you have provided for us. We thank you because you are great. We thank you, Lord, because you are good. All these things I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.